Magic Leap, the name itself promised as much, and nine-figure investments from giants like Qualcomm and Google definitely prove that we're not the only ones interested. So just what are they building in Plantation, north of Miami? At TechCrunch Disrupt Berlin, we had a chance to try the Magic Leap 1 and took a glimpse into the future of mixed reality. Just to be clear up front, this $2,000 headset is geared towards developers rather than consumers. Same as the most comparable device out there, Microsoft HoloLens. Speaking of, the Magic Leap feels what I somehow expected or wished the HoloLens to be. The field of view is larger by about 45%. The 16.9 image of the HoloLens is around the size of three palms on my fully extended arm, which feels like a very small window. With the Magic Leap, you get a taller 4x3 image, which is about four or five hand spans wide. That makes the experience a lot more immersive in practice. The headset also feels much more comfortable to wear. The materials are nice and it's lightweight. The drawback on the Magic Leap 1 though, is that the hardware is not implemented into the headset itself. So you'll always have a little Disman shaped computer dangling on your hip, a nostalgic sensation for anyone who used a portable CD player in the 90s. I stopped noticing its existence once I was surrounded by holograms. Whatever you do with Magic Leap 1 starts with a process called mapping. The headset scans a room to find out where to place the virtual objects. Generally, the inside out cameras on the headset do a good job of finding out where everything is, but there are still the occasional jitters that you would get with any current mixed reality solution. The display quality feels really good. Even in the demo room flooded with light and the low lying sun, the content projected by the Magic Leap 1 felt crisp and bright. The furniture that the Wayfair app enabled us to drop into the room was clearly visible. It was still easy though to distinguish the real objects from the virtual ones, which appear as kind of ethereal, quasi-solid holograms. Rovio's mega hit Angry Birds was definitely good fun in Magic Leap. The virtual slingshot in your hands controls well, although of course you can't feel any tension in the rubber band. But it's still a delight to see the top lane physics in action. And I can easily imagine passing the time like this with a coffee or beer in one hand, half in the real world, half in the game. Dr. Grodbort's Invaders, on the other hand, was a much more immersive game that had me going all over the room, pressing buttons, operating machines, and blasting rogue robots that appeared all around me. Even with real life objects around, I felt fully immersed in the scene. Most notably, the Magic Leap 1 does feel like more of a real product and less of a clunky concept than the HoloLens, the meta AR glasses, and so on. Magic Leap and actually Microsoft HoloLens are both key players, so you can compare them to Apple and Google competing. And it's actually very important what's going to be the driver of this, of, this, of this competition. And my subjective opinion is that both Magic Leap and Microsoft HoloLens, they are just enablers of new stuff happening through mixed reality. But I think it's down to the app ecosystem itself or down to the actual implementations of the technology that we can see the real benefits, that we can see the real tangible use cases. So the company that is going to have the more power in terms of the, how rich the ecosystem would be, uh, this company is going to win. Piot makes a good point here. The Magic Leap 1 isn't something made for everybody or for every day, but rather it points the way to the future of mixed reality. Hardware that gets sleeker and more lightweight until you can barely notice it, and a new way of interacting with information that moves away from the screen and keyboard to something more visual that involves natural body movement, a new generation of internet. But I can easily imagine Magic Leap being the enabler to the transition between internet 2D and internet 3D. So what I mean by that is, obviously right now we have a flat screen, like your smartphone or your, or your laptop, and you, you, are, you, you receive the data in such form. And now, if you combine it with, with the spatial computing or image recognition that is soon going to be part of Magic Leap Stock, you can then immediately associate that, for instance, you just go out on the street and you just want to have a 3D Wikipedia, why not? You just go there, look at the look at the tree. You're curious what the tree is, what the tree is, and you just look at the tree. The, the tree is smashed. The tree the tree is scanned, and now out of this tree, you, you just receive whatever information you want. After a few short demos with the Magic Leap One, I have to say that it really does feel like magic. But then I see the price tag, and then I'm brought right back down to harsh reality. <laughs>